You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us this Thursday. I'm Janelle Slade across the state tonight. 85 specialty license plates just yesterday on the chopping block now receive an extension. Plus a plan in Butte 30 years in the making is finally reality tonight. We'll have those details in just a bit. But first torture, starvation and extreme mental abuse all captured on video before the death of a 12 year old boy in West Yellowstone. Well tonight a grandmother, a grandfather and a 14 year old uncle stand accused of viciously abusing the boy until his death. Accusations out of Gallatin County tonight that horror movies are made of. In fact, a warning for you at home of potentially disturbing content. Today in court, prosecutors repeatedly said a systematic torture led to the death of 12 year old James Alex Hurley. MTN's Cody Boyer was in the courtroom. I'm devastated. I'm mortified. I'm disgusted to my to my core. Charges of deliberate homicide by accountability. That's what 12 year old James Hurley's grandparents, Patricia Batts and James Sasser Jr. now face alongside his 14 year old uncle. Although she wants to remain anonymous, the news rocked one of Batts close friends. Before it was confirmed, you know, for, to me personally, that it was them, that these were those are my friend that did this, couldn't help her go to what this was like for him and how scared he must have been. Torture, a word used more than once by Gallatin County Associate Attorney Bjorn Boyer. I believe the systematic torture um, and beatings that were perpetrated on the victim in this case that led to his death. The preliminary report was blunt force trauma to the back of James' head. Court documents reveal a horrific timeline. Detectives found Hurley to be covered with injuries, having lived with Bats and Sasser for about two years. After Hurley's father passed away in 2018, his mother tried to call, with documents showing Bats blocked her from reaching him. Bats' friend says there was a breaking point. I knew something was wrong, and I encouraged her repeatedly to get him some help and to have him put somewhere. Um, and she just really expressed that she just did not like him. Investigators found places in the home where large amounts of blood were cleaned with vinegar. Then they found videos. She's on a lot of the videos that show uh, the torture to this young uh, boy. Um, she's in the videos uh, seen strangling uh, the boy. I trusted this woman. Like, I've known her since 2008. I'm just reeling. I'm, I'm devastated for this little boy. Bats now is held on a $750,000 bond. Sasser Jr., half a million dollars, along with Hurley's uncle. Each could face up to life in prison, something my source says is an answer at a steep cost. Everyone involved needs to go be put somewhere where they can't hurt anybody like this again. In Gallatin County, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Thanks, Cody. Now, the juvenile James Sasser III is being held in Billings and could face adult charges. In court today, the prosecutor said he kicked James Hurley several times in the head. Well, two people are now facing charges for helping three inmates escape from the Bighorn County Jail in Hardin last Friday. Court documents state 24-year-old Odessa Cartier, a girlfriend of one of the inmates, called in a false report of shots fired in a local trailer park, which prosecutors say pulled deputies away from the jail. Cartier, who is not in custody tonight, faces a felony charge of obstructing justice and a misdemeanor. And prosecutors say 42-year-old Robert Burgess, the alleged getaway driver, packed up the three inmates after their escape. Burgess was arrested Wednesday night and is now charged with obstruction of justice. Now, with the deputy responding to the trailer park, inmates lured the only on-duty officer at the jail into a cell, assaulted him, took his keys, and then escaped. Stephen Caplet and Anthony Castro were re-arrested in Billings last this week, and authorities are still looking for Andrew Parham. Now, the three inmates all face charges of escape and aggravated kidnapping, which carry a sentence of between two and 120 years in prison and a $50,000 fine. Well, a traffic stop on Interstate 90 nets a huge amount of methamphetamine, possibly one of the largest ever meth seizures in Montana. According to the Stillwater County News, a vehicle pulled over on I-90 in Stillwater County on Tuesday was loaded with more than 70 pounds of methamphetamine. Federal law enforcement told the paper that the meth seizure made by a Montana Highway Patrol trooper could be the largest of its kind in this state. And no details about this at this point about the person who was arrested other than that it was not a local resident.
And a Missoula man who was banned from city council meetings for making threats is now formally charged. Brandon Bryant appeared in court today after allegedly making and posting a threatening YouTube video aimed at Missoula City Council members. The 34 year old allegedly says he will quote hunt people and exterminate them. At his initial court appearance this afternoon, Bryant was advised not to speak, but he ignored that advice. Bryant said he is being stalked and is afraid for him and his his and his mother's life. Now, we also claim that someone else sent the threatening video. Court documents state that Bryant already admitted to a Missoula police officer that he made and posted the video. Bryant is banned from contacting any Missoula City Council member or entering city property. His bond is set at $100,000. Well, Montanans, especially residents in Butte, have been waiting for a long time for this. Details of the Superfund consent decree are now released. MTN's John Amy took a hard look at the report and has more. Butte has waited more than 30 years to finally see the plan to clean up more than a century's worth of mine waste. Here it is. Uh, this, this is the document um, in, in all of its splendor. The bulky consent decree was revealed during a conference at the Finland Hotel in Butte, which outlines the cleanup and remediation work and eventually will end Butte's status as a Superfund site. Butte Chief Executive Dave Palmer called this the beginning of the post-Superfund era. It's been a very long road for our community. But we are finally at the point where we see light at the end of the tunnel. The plan was worked out in closed negotiations between representatives from the EPA, Butte and the state, and the Atlantic Richfield Company. Atlantic Richfield pledges more than $100 million in the cleanup of Butte. The proposed Butte consent decree would provide a final, permanent, protective and sustainable remedy. Looking forward to some light reading? <laughs> well, here's the consent decree. This is 30 years of negotiations. And this may be an historic day in Butte, but it's not the end of the story. There's still plenty more to go. And community leaders say it's up to the public to get out and digest and learn as much about this document as possible. Please try to attend one of those listening sessions that are going to be published, be there and voice your concerns for this community. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Thanks, John. Now the decree must now be approved by the Butte Council of Commissioners and then finally approved by the courts after a 30 day public comment period. If all moves, th moves through, work could begin this summer. Well, tonight, an update on the 85 specialty license plates that were recently revoked by the Montana Motor Vehicle Division. Now the state says it will grant an extension to every organization affected by this change. MVD is still determining what is an appropriate amount of time for that extension and will reach out to the affected organizations in the near future. State Senator Jill Konauer, who sponsored the legislation that changed the specialty license plates rule, tells MTN that the initial letter that went out to organizations was confusing and an extension is the right thing to do. Now there are more than 17,000 sets of specialty plates that were slated to be revoked currently out on the roads. Well, if you're a parent heading out to hunt with your youth hunter for the special youth deer only hunt next fall, you too can now hunt, just not deer. The Montana Fish and Wildlife Commission approved the change this morning. The original rule stated the adult had to be a non-hunter, but Fish, Wildlife and Parks Enforcement Division asked for the change given how many other hunting seasons overlap with that youth deer hunt. Now, those hunting seasons include antelope, moose and upland game bird. Fish, Wildlife and Parks says if an adult hunter takes a deer during the hunt, it will be treated as any other poaching case. Still to come on your 9 o'clock news, a documentary goes in depth. A look at the issues of prosecuting criminals on reservations in Montana and across the nation. But first, how's the weather looking, Bob? Well, you know, we started off with temperatures into the sub-zero range, 27 below zero at Baker this morning. Yeah, that's how cold it was. Now, things are starting to drain away from us when it comes to Arctic air. And what's coming up next, some nice warm air for the weekend. We'll chat about that coming up after the break.